，有。to the video. This is very much so a sit down chatting video, so that's my disclaimer already. This is going to be from primarily the lens of a traditional student, but honestly all of these things apply to anybody thinking about going into undergrad, getting their associates, making an investment in their education. I think that these are seven things that you should definitely think about, consider, look into, coming from somebody who did not consider, look into, or do these things before they made that investment into their education. So, without further ado, I want to just get right into it. And I think the first one speaks for itself, which is think about it. Really, really think about it if it's something that you want to do and why. Because I think that was my biggest downfall starting college. I knew I wanted to. I didn't know why. The why was probably because I had a lot of like parental peer pressure, right, to like take the next steps in life, and that's what they were. But I think it's super important to also just take a step back, be like, what do I want? What do I think I want? I started my undergrad thinking I was going to be a scientist. Obviously, that did not happen. So take that minute. You know, another thing to think about too is that even if you want to take that minute all the way up into the point of those first few weeks of classes, look into the final cutoff date for your full refund of credits because there usually is at least one week grace period where you can go to your class, sit in it, be registered as a student, and still drop and still get your money refunded. But make sure that it, there's two dates usually. There's that first date where you get your money refunded. And then there's that second date where you'll get a withdrawal, you won't get refunded, all of that stuff. So really look into those details and those dates because that can kind of be your test drive, you could say, of is this for me? Is this something I could see myself doing for the next four, five, six, seven, eight plus years to potentially better myself in the career field I'm interested in, right? So that's my number one. Think about it. Think about it if it's really something you'd like to do. My second piece of advice is going to be to keep your options open. Ow! Gus. Keeping your options open when you're new on campus can be so detrimental to the friend group you end up with, the clubs you associate with, how successful you are, what your priorities are. All of those things really add up into the experience. So make sure that you're kind of setting yourself up for success. I'm literally getting attacked by my cat right now. Like, those first few weeks, and nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows what they want or where their people are. So just keep participating in everything. Show up. It's going to feel hard. It's going to feel embarrassing. You're going to be in a vulnerable state, but it's worth it. I promise. Okay. Next, my third bit here is that be responsible. Okay. And you can be responsible and be cool and have fun all while going to college. I feel like the most adult mom splainer right now being like be responsible and still have fun and be cool because that was something that again I feel like I did not grasp early on. I just was like party, let's go out, I don't really care, not at all focus on what the reasons were for why I was actually at college which was for school right so find people that are like oh my gosh let's hit the library till nine pre-game after and then go out, right? Like there is a balance that you can find between getting your shit done and going out and having fun. So I love you, but you're just gonna have to leave me alone for just two seconds, could you? Or could you just lay down and not attack me? Could you do one of those two things? Could you? Yeah, basically just find the balance between responsibility and fun, okay? You can do it, it's possible. Plus like, you don't wanna miss out on either side of that. Number four, this is going to be, I think, like the hardest one, probably, but the most important, which is be your own self-advocate. This is the first time, if you're a traditional student, that you're going to have to go out into the world and truly advocate for yourself. Yeah, you can call mom and dad to make a phone call or send an email or do whatever they need to do, but with classes, with friends, with going to the doctor, with all of these things that maybe you don't think about that your parents or your peers help you out with, you're going to be navigating that alone and you're going to have to listen to your intuition. You're going to have to be like, is this responsible or is this reckless? Do I have the balance to do this? All those things, right? But it's that first time that you're really able to advocate for yourself and don't be afraid to. 
like something that I always had to remind myself of when I was in college is like I'm paying them to be here like they're working for me right it's do what you want there right get the education you want show up to office hours <laughs> show up do all those things use health services be outspoken about the things you need to be successful because nobody else is gonna do it for you five and with that kind of four and five right being your own self-advocate is great and awesome and it's super important but sometimes it's like you're just fucking beaten down and like you need somebody else to be your voice for you so i suggest finding one person just one whether it's a friend whether it's a professor whether it's your advisor whoever it may be find one person that you can call text whatever and be like oh my god I'm throwing up, I'm so hungover, please come pick me up from this McDonald's, or I am stressing, can you please run through these flashcards with me, or oh my gosh, my cat died, can we hang out, right? There's lots of different things that you might need somebody for, and it's important to have at least one person to do that, so find that network, even if it's just what. The number six, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but get your money worth, okay? You are putting in a fucking bag to be there. Use it all, do it all, be about it all. Your tuition includes a bunch of other shit. Look at the breakdown on your bill and see. They're probably including an athletic fee, an administration fee, a academic fee, which allows you to use the library and the computers in there and the books, right? Go and use that. Go and rent out all of the, like, sporting goods equipment they have for you. Like, at UMD where I went, they had so many things that were included for students, but it just wasn't advertised very clearly. So look into that, take advantage of it, make the most of it, because there are so many different things that campuses do and offer and you're paying for, so you might as well use them anyways. That's one thing I feel like I really missed out on was I just didn't, I did not go or explore campus or go into other departments or do any events that were outside of like the live arts sphere I was in. So really, really, really take advantage of that. That's what I would suggest. Go to your freaking school's website, look at their activity calendar, look at all that stuff because it's out there and you're paying for it. Again, you're paying for it. You're paying for it, so use it. Lastly, number seven is kind of just like my wrap up, right? I have document, enjoy yourself, and work kind of like three different things. Documentation is important because any, again, kind of tying into accountability and self-advocacy piece, no one is going to be watching your back like you are. Write it down. Even if you are having issues in a class and let's say you go to the professor's office, that you go to the professor's office hours after class and talk about, hey, Joe Schmo is, you know, not pulling their end of the weight here. I just wanted to let you know what's up. Send them an email after. Hey, I just wanted to follow up from, you know, the touch base we had at your office today. Thank you so much for hearing me out on this and such issue, blah, 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 right? But at least there's a written trail of it because you truly never know when anything like that will come back to help you. So I recommend documenting anything that you think could potentially help you in the future. <laughs> Having fun. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Go out, do what you want, learn about yourself, try new things. Make yourself uncomfortable. Constantly push yourself. Be in the arena, right? Brene Brown, be out there. Be in the arena. Try new things. Discover yourself. All that good stuff. And I put work on here because not to be like, live your life to work. I totally don't believe that. I think that we work to live. We don't live to work. But I have seen countless people who either didn't work in high school or continued to not work after high school through their college degree for whatever reason it might be. Maybe they took out loans to pay through college. Maybe mom and dad are helping them with living. It doesn't really matter to me. I think that if anybody has help to get through school that that's awesome and they should definitely take advantage of all the help that they can get. But when you enter the, the real world or you graduate and you're looking for your first post-grad job, I would say that is the most difficult time to try and advocate for yourself because you are fighting uphill with everybody else who's graduated on top of everybody else who's already graduated who maybe isn't where they want to be or is still trying to weasel their way into the field they want, into the job they want, into the title they want, and the salary they want, right? So 
having a little bit of work experience, like actual part-time, full-time job, even if it's a summer job, whatever, having that actual experience is going to take you a lot farther than even the education will, as terrible as it is to say, but from my personal experience and from my peers and like what I have seen around me, I think it's detrimental to your post-grad success to work while you're in college. Like I said, it can be part-time, it can be a couple hours a week, but I think working, having a job, just sets you apart and it is going to help you in the long run. Even more so if that job applies to the field you're in. One of the things that I have learned through one of my like work trainings, I don't even know which one it was, but they talk about cultivating the raw talent and focusing on the raw talent you have. Find out what you're good at, whether it's as simple as that and run with it. If you're good at it and you like it, who doesn't like things they're good at, right? Do it, okay? Um, because I, I really don't know that I'd ever not want to have a career. Like I, I love YouTube, I love making videos, but I think having like a real job, having my own real life outside of this is so important. And I learned so much, like I get so much value from my job and from working with people and working on teams and just getting new experiences every day. So cultivate that raw talent, okay? I really, really hope Gus does too that you were able to like find anything helpful out of this video. Going to college is honestly, it was like the very, the most scariest, the scariest thing I've done since moving to Chicago. Hopefully I can prepare you for this next chapter in your life because it's, it's a big one. Whether you finish or not, just know that like, it's gonna pay off in the end and whatever you want, if it's humanly possible, you can get it, okay? It's humanly possible, you can get it. But I will leave you with those seven pieces of knowledge about starting your freshman year of university. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like it, let me know in the comments how scared you are about starting your first year of college or what you're studying or maybe other questions you have because I also did college pre-COVID. I graduated during the pandemic, so I don't really know exactly what starting college is like now, post-pandemic. So maybe there's some insights there, but thank you again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.